Mortgage rates are falling. The Fed says they'll be cutting. The market says they'll be cutting a lot. UBS says they'll be cutting nine times. What the heck is somebody to believe? Matt, the mortgage guy here is to talk to us about the various loan products that are out there. Is it a 2-1 buy down, a 1-0 buy down, 30-year fix? How many? It's just so many options. It hurts my head, but that's just what he does for a living. What do you got, buddy? Right. For for somebody who's buying a primary or or, or they're buying a, a single family with the intention of, of house hacking, I truly believe the 1-0 buy down is the play, at least for now, Q1 of 2024. This might change, as do many things with the real estate market and whatnot. But um, when people come to me, Mike, the best question they usually ask is, Matt, if you were me, knowing everything mm -hmm. you know about my scenario, what would you do? And I'm not saying this works for everybody, but at least take this into consideration because for many, based on the trajectory of rates, it makes sense to do a 1-0 buy-down. A quick explanation of 1-0 buy-down, little bit of credit from the seller. You know, for most loan amounts, we're looking at like three or four grand. And instead of getting a 6.6% 30-year fixed, you've got 5.6% for year one, and then 6.6% for years two through 30. And the reason why that's what I would do if I was in your shoes buying a house in 2024 is if rates continue to go down, like we think they will, they've kind of popped back to six, 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 seven as of, you know, early January when we're recording this, if they get to 5.99 end of 2024, five, seven, five, early 25, you're going to refinance this loan, but why pay 6.6% 6 .6 for the next 12 months? when you can have the seller subsidize that. And, and here's the thing. I never promise that you're gonna refinance into 575. Maybe you don't. Maybe something wild happens and rates don't come down. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it might. You've got a 6.6% 30 year fixed. You got that subsidized for the first 12 months, but um, more likely than not, rates are coming down. You can refinance. Just six, nine, 12 months ago, we were structuring this Two one. I don't think that's necessary now. We're in a market that's a little bit more competitive. You can't get as much seller credit. And so the 1-0 just fits with this current market. Right now, if you structured it 4-6, six, 5-6, six, and then 6-6, six, six, you might be in a weird situation next year at a 5-6 where you're like, do I wait for it to go lower? You know, so 1-0 buy down for a lot of people, not for everybody. I never say everybody with mortgage advice. Yeah, no, it's never for everybody. It's everybody's unique situation. I have no idea what what would a 1-0 buy-down cost the average. I mean, saying average is crazy. Good credit score, 20% down. What's a 1-0 buy-down? Are we talking half a point, a point? How much seller credit are we going to need? It's it's usually going to be about 80 basis points. So, right. so, so let's call it a point. Let's ask for seller credit of one point, which is one point of the loan uh, balance shoot, ask for one point of the sale price. That way you can get the one I'll buy down and have extra savings on closing costs. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is like, I always give that advice. And, and, and so we're aligned there, Mike, ask for a little bit more. If you, if you, if you need 32, 30 for the buy down and you get 4,000, great. You've got 700 and some change. It'll go towards offsetting closing costs. That yeah. never hurts. So so 1% yeah. is probably the perfect thing to ask for. Ask for 1% of the purchase price. And really, you know, it's it's not a big ask. I know mm -hmm. that we've we've lived through some great times over the last six months where you could ask for 10,000, 15,000. Mm -hmm. Go out there and ask for four grand on a four hundred thousand yeah. dollar purchase. Yeah. Yeah. Again, folks, I would I would talk about using points <laughs> as seller credits, way to negotiate again. Sellers are sellers. Sometimes they look at, hey, I got my price, but they don't really look at the net. Uh, if you can go get it, might as well ask for it. You can always negotiate away. Uh, yeah. If somebody what, wanted to call to look at their scenario with you, um, what should they do? Go to greatmortgagebroker.com. We're happy to help you get pre-approved, talk you through a 1-0 buy down, show you scenarios. So greatmortgagebroker.com. Before I forget, Mike, one thing I wanted to mention is the reason why I love the buy down more than, and, and a temporary, like we're talking about here, versus permanent is because when we have a feeling rates are coming down and everything's pointing towards it and everyone's talking about it, some people would say, use that 4,000 and buy the rate down permanently. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the problem. You buy the rate down for four grand, you get to six and a quarter. Right. When you refinance, that four grand is lost, right? Yep. Versus this temporary buy down, it offsets your payment and you're actually seeing those savings and feeling them. 
if you refinance in nine months, those three months of leftover actually goes towards a principal pay down. You get that yep. money back versus when you pay points on a mortgage, the, the points are a sunk cost. They're gone mm -hmm. forever. And so the only time it really makes sense to pay points and, and pay any significant amount of points is when you're in a truly set it and forget it mode where you say, Matt, I'm going to pay 4,500 bucks. It's going to save me 280 a month. This thing's going to be, you know, break even in two years, but I plan to hold this thing. And some people on rental properties, honestly, I like the set it and forget it. I don't, yeah. I don't think everybody, you should be refinancing the thing every two years on a rental property. So that might make sense. But this is the kind of advice, Mike, that is, it's different for every single person. If it's right. not us and you're not going to greatmortgagebroker.com to connect with me and my team that's licensed in 48 states, talk to somebody who's going to be able to give you the right advice. Um, and there's a lot of great brokers. Yeah. We're down. <laughs> I was going to share this stat with you, Mike. 2022, about 400,000 licensed loan originators. Mm. 2023, I heard the number was down to 200,000. Going into 24, we're under 100. 97,000. Wow. More so, seventy five percent dropped. Did I just do that math right? Yes, from twenty two. I mean, at least based on those numbers I saw, we went four hundred, two hundred, ninety seven. That would be a seventy five seventy five percent drop from the peak. Good news Wild. for the consumer. The good ones are probably the ones that are left. So yeah, exactly. you got a better shot of talking to a good one. <laughs> uh, Greatmortgagebroker dot com. Look them up. See what's right for you. Thanks, buddy.